Thursday, March 29th, 2018, Monaco 64, home of alternative economics and contrarian views. So aside from looking at the market this morning, I'm going to look at a, another book. And this one is actually in Portuguese. It's a Brazilian book. It's this one here. Uh, and you might ask, uh, why? You know, what's it got to do with the markets and uh, what's going on now? Well, I was born in Brazil and I grew up in Brazil. I haven't lived there for over 30 years. And uh, Brazil, of course, is a very uh, rich country, resource-wise. Uh, it's bigger than the continental United States without Alaska. Uh, it has all the potential to be, uh, you know, a prosperous and, uh, how can I say, wealthy country. Uh, but, unfortunately, it's been uh, mismanaged. It's very corrupt, uh, the establishment. And one of the viewers asked me, actually in Portuguese, a question. Oh, can you talk about Brazil when you, when you grew up there? That was a few days ago. Uh, I'm not going to talk about, you know, when I was in Brazil. Uh, all I can say is that my, my dad always told me that uh, when he was young, he used to be told that Brazil was going to be the country of the future. And then, you know, when he was older and I was grown up, he used to say it's still going to be the country of the future. It's, uh, but why? Uh, well, you have to go back to uh, 1808. And that's what this book is about. And uh, it's interesting that... Uh, Right now on Netflix, there's a new Brazilian series. There's a season one called The Mechanism. And it's a Brazil. It's in Portuguese. I, I, I watched it in Portuguese, but you can also watch it in English, and it's dubbed. And it's very good. I thought it was very good. And it actually explains the recent uh, corruption scandal in Brazil uh, that uh, basically started from the bottom. Uh, I'm not going to go into too much detail about this, but uh, because it could take uh, hours to talk about it, but uh, like in the States, uh, they, they've kind of drained the swamp in Brazil, uh, but it didn't start from the top because the top, because all the corruption starts at the top. So who's going to want to drain the swamp uh, from the top? Uh, so that's why it's still questionable whether Trump will be able to drain the swamp because the mechanism at the top is so corrupt. And that's what the name of the uh, series is, The Mechanism. Uh, and to cut a long story short, uh, it, it started from the bottom in that uh, it was a police chief, a federal police chief uh, from Curitiba, which is uh, in the southern state of Paraná in Brazil. Uh, that uh, office of the federal police was investigated a lot of... Uh, like uh, money laundering crime, uh, financial crime, and uh, this dogged <laughs> police chief, he uh, basically discovered that uh, there was a, a black uh, market dollar uh, a dealer in Curitiba that was siphoning uh, billions and billions of dollars uh, for these <laughs> through these accounts uh, and. Uh, Ba and they eventually, they, it was discovered that these accounts were linked to the biggest uh, contractors for the federal government, uh, for uh, Petrobras, which is the big uh, Brazilian oil state oil company. And uh, the uh, guy who started this investigation, he was actually uh, given leave and retired because he was so... People, they didn't want him to, to find out, you know, there was corruption. But he was able to infiltrate the new investigations. He left uh, one of his assistants there. And eventually, they, they were able, through um, the judges, some judges that were not corrupt, to arrest uh, the biggest 13 uh, heads uh, of all the biggest contractors for the Brazilian government. Uh, as you probably know, uh, the president of Brazil was impeached, Dilma Rousseff. Rousseff. Uh, so it actually started from the bottom. And uh, I highly recommend uh, people watch this mechanism. And, um, and it's interesting that a lot of times they weren't sure if this was going to happen. 
uh, because it, they, they were saying, you know, if it goes to Brasilia, uh, they're going to, like, kill the, um, kill the investigation. But eventually it did go to Brasilia, uh, and the Supreme Court judges actually voted in favor of leaving the investigation in Curitiba, which is the uh, local uh, federal, which was the local federal police, and the judge in Curitiba as well was not corrupt, and he decided to to do that. And uh, it's interesting because you listen uh, to the fir the first big guy that was arrested was a ex director of Petrobras, and people are saying, "Oh, we can't arrest the director of Petrobras," you know. But eventually, it happened. Uh, and uh, I got to, got me to thinking <laughs> it w it was the equivalent of uh, arresting all the heads of uh, you know Wall Street banks, Federal Reserve of New York, Goldman Sachs. That's what happened in Brazil, and um, that's why the Brazilian economy right now is uh, not doing well. A lot of uh, uh, this corruption and this uh, bribery for contracts did create jobs and uh it it did hurt the economy but personally in the long term i think it's a good thing hopefully it will give uh, uh politicians and business people uh, uh food for thought before they uh you know before they uh act in a corrupt way uh a lot of the money went uh, Offshore, uh, what they were doing is the these uh, thirteen big uh, contractors in Brazil, uh, and the they were oil companies. It, it, they did contracts for the Brazilian oil company for the government. It's all construction, engineering, all kinds of people. They they uh, a lot of times just uh, made up phony uh, projects and build the government and uh, the ministers and. Uh, all, even all the a lot of uh, Congress people, senators, they got kickbacks, and they laundered the money through this uh, these this dollar uh, black market dealer, and uh, the money was sent offshore, and uh, they found out. Uh, will it does it mean that Brazil now is clean and is going to get better? Well, not necessarily, because uh, Lula, uh, the president. Uh, this program, you know, says that uh, these are fictitious characters and they use different names, but you can tell that you know, it's about what happened in Brazil. And uh, you look at Lula, the president before Dilma, uh, he, uh, he's just re recently had a jail sentence suspended after Brazilian court ruling, so he's almost uh, in jail. Uh, but now that his, it was suspended, he's trying to run for president. And it's interesting that when he got to Curitiba, I think yesterday, for a campaign uh, speech, uh, a lot of people were uh, screaming, uh, uh, Lula is a thief. In, in Curitiba, he, he should be in jail, you see. So Brazilians are standing, uh, waking up. Uh, so... What's it got to do with the U.S., the U.K.? Well, it shows that it will be painful uh, if it really, really drain the swamp in the U.S. and the U.K. And in my opinion, it needs to start from the bottom. Um, and what about this 1808 book? Uh, well, when they arrested the Petrobras director, he was the first big fish they arrested. He was from Rio, and uh, he was being questioned at the police station. And they asked him, oh, so how did this all start? And he actually said, oh, it started in 1808. And then I remembered, you know, I re read this book. Uh, 1808 is the day, if uh, many of you might not know, Brazil uh, was a collection of Portuguese colonies up until 1822 when uh, it declared independence. But in 1808, during the Napoleonic Wars, uh, the, Brazil, uh, the Portuguese... Uh, court and the royal family, uh, they had to flee uh, Lisbon because Napoleon was gonna was invading Portugal and they were concerned that they they didn't stay, stay there to fight. They, they ran to uh, Brazil and it was a huge operation and they needed protection as well uh, to, to sail to Brazil. Uh, so, actually, there was an agreement between the Portuguese 
a royal family, Portuguese court, and the British. So the British Navy actually helped um, the royal family go to Brazil, and Rio became the seat of the Portuguese Empire, and the, the British, in return, got access to the Brazilian colonies, to the market, because that was, before that, all the resources, all the gold, all the exploitation had to go through Portugal. Uh, no other country could be involved, and then Portugal uh, you know, sold it off to other countries. But now the British got access to it, and that's how uh, the British uh, got uh, into Brazil in terms of being able to invest and to send uh, business there. Uh, I don't think it was a bad thing. But uh, so why 1808? What happened uh, when they got to Brazil? Well, I was reading this, read it over a year ago, and uh, it's amazing how uh, when they got to Rio, the Portuguese court, they they were thousands of people, you no know, hangers on from the Braz Portuguese court, the king. Uh, while he was a prince, his mother, uh, John the Sixth, the the prince, uh, he was to become king, and uh, they basically uh, took over people's properties so that their uh, the court, the people in the court, could live comfortably. So they just basically expropriated people's property. There's a lot of corruption. Brazil was a rich country. So that's where it started, all the corruption, and it's been going on for 200 years. And that's why, uh, and the fiat money doesn't help either. Uh, Brazil, of course, we've had four different currencies probably in the last, <clears throat> excuse me, 75 years. Um, it makes it a lot easier for people to steal the fiat money. So then that's why this guy, when he was at the police station, he was asked, uh, when did, did this all start, 1808? And then the police chief said, the prosecutor said, yeah, we know that. Uh, tell me more about how your thing started. But I thought that was really interesting. So 200 years of uh, this mechanism of corruption uh, that starts from the top and it goes all the way to the bottom. And that's why you get uh, a very few rich at the top and the the uh, general public very poor, and that's what Brazil is, a very small middle class. Unfort and that's why I make these videos, because I've known about this uh, in Brazil, and I don't want uh, uh, the UK to turn like that. I wouldn't want to see the US to become like that. So uh, that's 1808. The mechanism on Netflix, highly recommended. Uh, will Brazil turn the corner? Well, only time will tell. Uh, but interesting that now he's running for president again, this guy Lula. he uh, It's amazing. Uh, it's almost like Hillary Clinton running for president, I guess, because she needs to cover uh, needed to cover up all the crap. So Lula's running for president. Uh, if they elect this guy for president, then I would say uh, no hope. <laughs> but uh, what about the markets this morning? Of course, yesterday we had a big drop in gold and silver. Uh, I'm not concerned. We're still within the consolidation. It looked like we'd broken out, but these things could take longer. Uh, this morning, gold is at 1325, basically unchanged. Range has been 1322 to 1328. Silver, 1625 uh, right now, down about three cents. Range has been 1622 to 1634. Stock markets, uh, yeah, weren't able to really mount any uh, move higher yesterday. I was actually watching the markets uh, just before they closed, and uh, S&P and NASDAQ had been down all day, but uh, they were able to keep the Dow positive, and then towards the end, the Dow was going towards zero, and then it kept going back up plus, and then finally at the close, they weren't able to keep it, uh, you know, green and it finished down 10 points which is marginal s p finished down 7.6 points or a th almost a third of a percent and the nasdaq composite finished down 60 which is 0.85 percent so uh stock market's not out of the woods uh this morning the dow is up 49 
uh, 0.2%, S&P is up 5 uh, and the NASDAQ 100 future is up 31 or half a percent. Currency-wise, we're seeing the dollar strengthen a bit against the pound. Pound is down a quarter of a percent at 140.38. Euro is unchanged at 123. And uh, dollar is down uh, a quarter of a percent against the yen at 106.58. Uh, cryptocurrencies are, are still... Uh, finding a tough time here. We've had a bit of a drop uh, overnight. Uh, Bitcoin got down to, well, it's now 7,500. Ethereum is almost back to 400. Uh, and Litecoin is down into like 121. Uh, does that mean it's over? No, I'm still holding on to the cryptocurrencies I have. I, I've said uh, months ago that uh, for me personally, I want to stick to my precious metals and a few my favorite uh, altcoins and cryptocurrencies. Um, am I advising you to do that? No, this is for you, up to you as always. I'm I'm not. My videos do not con con constitute financial advice. So that's where we're at. Uh, so yeah, 1808 for the viewers that my Brazilian viewers, I recommend this book. I'm not sure if it's in English. You might want to look and see 1808. Uh, it's by a guy, a guy called Laurentino Gomez. So you might want to look into that. So uh, yeah, they are trying to drain the swamp in Brazil and it started from uh, the bottom, not the top. So if you enjoyed this video, please like, share it uh, far and wide, subscribe to my channel if you haven't yet. And you can also follow me on Steemit, which is linked to DTube, which is like an alternative to YouTube. And you can follow me on Twitter as well. Take care. Bye.